Okay, so let's get down to business. I'm going to assume you already have a library of components of your own along with some text and color styles already defined in Figma. But if you don't, feel free to duplicate this file from Figma community and follow along with me during this tutorial. I already prepared a basic style guide along with some example components that we're going to be using in our table later. So we're going to begin by creating a cell component. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard to create a new text layer and I'm going to type cell content inside. I'm going to select one of my predefined text styles and a color style as well. Then I'm going to hit Shift A to create an outer layout frame out of it and uh, let's see. First I'm going to set its width to be a multiply of 8, so uh, let's say uh, 192 pixels. Right after that, before I forget, I'll adjust the width of the text layer inside. So let's set it to fill container. Going back into our outer layout frame, let's also make sure the direction is set to horizontal, the spacing between items is set to zero, and for padding, I want it to be eight pixels on the sides and 60 pixels on the top and bottom. Instead of typing these values manually in the alignment and padding popover, we can type in a shorthand in the padding around items input like this. Finally, let's make sure the vertical alignment is set to center. All right, now let's turn this into a component and name it simply a cell. Okay, we have a cell component, but we are not quite done yet. So far, there is only a text layer inside, which seems like a good place to start for a component like a cell, but we know we are going to need to have different content inside as well. A button, for example. The way we can pull it off without the need of detaching our cell is to use a boilerplate component technique. If you'd like to learn more, check out my previous video on this topic, but for now, the only thing we need to know is we are going to turn this text layer inside into its own component so that we can swap it with anything we want later on. So let's drag it outside while holding down an option key to make a new copy. Let's put it inside of an outer layout frame by hitting Shift and A and let's zero out the spacing between items and padding properties. Let's set its width to be something like 160 pixels. And similarly as to what we've done just a minute ago with our cell, let's make sure the text layer inside it is set to fill container. Lastly, let's rename the text layer inside to something generic like content so that the future text overrides are preserved when replacing this with a different component. Okay, before we make it a component, let's create a couple of additional variants so that we can display all sorts of data in here conveniently. I'm going to make a copy of it, and this time I'm going to set the text inside to be strong. Then I'm going to duplicate both frames, hit the return key to select the text layer inside, and change the text alignment to right. And I'll use these variants for displaying numbers in my table. Oh, and in case you're wondering why would I need separate variants for displaying numbers, there are two reasons. First, numerical data is easier to read when kept right aligned. And by creating a variant for that, I'm promoting this approach within other users of my components library, or a design system if you will. A second reason is that number columns are easier to read and compare when displaying using what's called tabular figures. If you're lucky enough to use a typeface that supports monospace numbers, you can enable this option in the Type Details panel in Figma. In my case, I already have a text style defined just for this. So instead of using this one, I'll use number N400 uh, regular. And for the strong, I'll use number N400 bold. Okay, back to our variants. Now I'll select all frames and turn them into their own components. And I'll combine them as variants. Let's rename the property one to strong. And then I'm going to add a new property and call it a number. Now I'm going to select the first two variants and under the number property, I'll type in false. For the remaining two, I'm going to type in true. Using values like true and false or on and off lets you create these fun little toggles in your variant settings. Then I'll select the first and the third variant and under the strong property, I'll type in false. And again, for the remaining two, I'm going to type in true. I also want to change the text in the last two variants to 1, 2, 3, so that it's easier to understand that these variants are meant to store numbers. Lastly, let's name this component uh, body cell content. And let's hit Shift A to enable outer layout on this frame. This will save us some time on moving and rearranging variants inside in case of future changes.
Okay, this should work for body rows of my table, but for header rows, I would like the styling to be a bit different by default. So I'm going to duplicate my body cell content component and I'll remove the last two variants. Then I'll select text layers inside of the two remaining variants and I'll apply a different text style over here. So let's say uh, heading 300 and let's make the color lighter too. For my second variant, in case it's a header for number columns, I'll change the text alignment to right. And I'll also change the text inside to say cell header. And I'm going to paste it over here as well. Going into variant settings, I'll remove the number property and I'll rename the first one to align. And for the values themselves, let's name the first one left and the other one right. Lastly, let's make sure the name of this component is header cell content. Okay, that should do it for our default cell content. As a last step, let's go back to our cell component. Over here, I'd like to remove the text layer inside and replace it with an instance of our body cell content component instead. So just command C and command V. And of course, I'm going to make sure that its width is set to fill container. We're almost done here. Let me just quickly put my cell components inside frames I've prepared before and... Yep, we're good to go with creating row components. See you in the next video.